conceptual understanding i believe um um is an important thing that they have to have uh, with them um for a long time even even after they have graduated uh, from our mit because i found that most students uh, they they want to study not because they want to take a degree but they want to take the knowledge and then take the knowledge with them to the industry and then work as engineers in practice so to develop students conceptual understanding i like to start with a, just a general description of what we're going to talk about so this is where we're going to start to say well what can we do with work done so we can work out the work done but what what does that help us well what it helps us is that we're going to be able to work out the velocity of our fluids she takes her time to explain the problems until we understand it then i'll state the concept with a definition and we go through a lot of questions to consolidate our understanding on the topics covered in the course. Um, we're taught the materials and concepts and then we're given questions um, and then at the end we'll go through them together as a class. And then on this side we have the work done. So we've got force times displacement for the one that's doing work, so that's 100 cos 30 is in the same direction as our displacement, so that's positive. There's a lot of other things you can do to improve student learning. Probably one of the most important ones is to have a, a good plan for your lecture series. You need to take notice of the experience students have initially and where you want them to go when their lecture is finished, other courses or employability. I think it's got to do with the whole structure of the course, so not just the lecture. And in the first lecture, you explain to students what your plan is. Where are you starting from? Where are you going to? Why are you doing it? Why is it valuable to do this? Then every lecture, you refer back to that plan. OK, now, lab exam B is a tricky one. If you get a pass, feel happy. If you get a good mark, be really happy. It requires uh, some interesting manipulation of ideas and a good understanding of electronics. If you do very well at lab exam B, quite seriously, you'll probably make a good electronic designer. Yeah, it still takes a decent amount of time to explain everything properly, and his notes are very thorough as well. I normally do a summary of the previous lecture um, that they uh, did before the class. In every class I do that. A lot of the stuff he covers has gone over to lectures, but whenever he sees that people aren't quite sure what's happening, he makes sure to go over it again if needed. So let's see uh, what we can learn uh, on Cello Foundations. Uh, so we'll be covering initially uh, some theoretical aspects uh, on this topic. And then later on, we'll be doing some number crunchy examples uh, to understand on how to apply what you learn in theory into kind of practical uh, scenarios. And that way, I found um, students have more engagement, and then um, they they have or they get the the basic knowledge that is required uh, for that uh, two-hour lecture that they did in last last week. So he helps us develop our understanding of the topic by repeating everything multiple times, making sure everyone understands it. And then you can see uh, when we have any problems at any step, he stops and we talk about the questions. Let's do one by one, because I want everyone to uh, know how to apply the equations, because this is not straightforward. You should know how to use a calculator, because they have exponential and we have to convert some cases decrease to radians. So good to uh, get practice how to apply uh, these equations. So I found that strategy works really well uh, for the students uh, to get what, what is required from that particular topic of that day. Now that sequence of introducing things in the lecture, um, going through hands-on the theory in a tutorial, and then hands-on constructing a building in a laboratory is a very good process. Week one, the lecture. Week two, the tute. Week three, the lab. That way, the ideas and the concepts are bubbling along for at least three weeks in the student mind. He'll go through stuff thoroughly in the lecture, but it's the lab tasks and the tutor tasks and stuff like that that really enforces um, the content. By constant attention and review of the material and using it hands-on, after that three-week cycle, most students have got the concepts and indeed the actual skill to, to operate the technique or the knowledge uh, properly as would be useful in an engineering career. Because you're actually doing it, 
it's a course that's um, very practical. Uh, another thing which is very valuable is detailed documentation for the tutors. If you have good detailed guides for all the tutors, then the quality of the labs and tutorials will be much higher as students will learn more. Typically, I would uh, bring little models like uh, a timber beam and pretend that it's made of steel or made of concrete and then bend it, flex it, twist it so that they, they can visually understand what behave, what they behave and how, how they deflect, how they deform. Uh, most lectures, he's got a bit of a case study um, where he'll show us, <laughs> unfortunately, it's usually a bit of a catastrophe, a collapsed building or something like that. These are things that you want to avoid and these are the reasons why it occurred in the first place. So it was a, like a two-story higher space and the entire steel roof come down. The reason to that is the roof, they put a lot of vegetation on it after the construction. So after the, the building is being used, I found it quite uh, uh, useful because a lot, of, a lot of our students will need to see uh, to understand instead of just describe what happened in, by words or by mathematics. It gives you the, the perspective of what our work will actually apply to. A lot of students are essentially graphical learners. They need to see what is actually happening. I find myself walking down Swanson Street looking at all the buildings around. I'm driving on the freeway stuck in peak hour traffic and I'm looking at all the overpasses and I'm sort of picking them all apart and you understand what we do in class, how it actually applies. And the roof was only designed for 0 0.75 kPa of live load. If the student are able to uh, see how the structure move or technically deform and they'll understand uh, uh, what, what needs to be uh, design into the building. There's a lot of metaphor and example, anecdotal evidence. He'll bring up multiple different ways to explain an individual concept.